good morning students today's topic of discussion is ode to autumn by john keats an analysis of ode to autumn by john keats basically in this class i am going to discuss the summary of ode to autumn by john keats before starting discussing the summary we have to know few important things about keats so ode to autumn was one of the famous odes written by john keats and it was composed on 19 september 1819 and the publication date of ode to autumn is 1820 John Keats is an English romantic or nature poet. He was born in 1795 in England and died in 1821 at the age of 25 of tuberculosis. In 1821 medical facility was not great to cure that disease and because of the disease he died at the very early age. Then he has written many poems and series of odes ode to autumn as one of his odes from the uh, series of odes written in 1819 uh, probably his last uh, sonnet uh, last work just be, just two years before his death the title as ode to autumn what does this uh, word uh, ord means ord is an elaborately structured poem praising or glorifying an event or individual describing nature intellectually as well as emotionally so ord is a uh, ord is an elaborately elaborately structural structured poem praising or glorifying an event or individual describing nature intellectually as well as emotionally here uh, uh, kids is praising autumn season uh, the subject of the poem itself is very special because uh, here kids has taken autumn season in a positive way next we, we move on to the structure of the poem the poem is divided into three stanzas each stanza consists of 11 lines so total 33 lines are there in this poem in terms of rhyme scheme each stanza is divided roughly into two parts in each stanza the first part is made up of the first four lines of this stanza and the second part is made up of the last seven lines the first part of each stanza follows an ab ab rhyme scheme the second part of each stanza is longer and varies in rhyme scheme the first stanza is arranged c d e d c c e and the second and third stanzas are arranged c d e c d d e the first part of each stanza serves to define the subject of the stanza and the second part offers room for musing development and speculation on that subject now let us start discussing the poem stanza first season of mirth and mellow fruitfulness here kids wants to say that autumn is the season of mirth it is the season when mirth gather on grounds or trees on trees it is also the season of ripe fruits that is fruits ripen in autumn in england next next line close bosom friend of the maturing sun conspiring with him how to load and bless with the fruit the vines that round the thatch eaves run to bend with the apples and moss the cottage trees now he the poet goes on to say that the warm rays of the sun ripens the fruits so uh, it seems that autumn and sun work together for the ripening of all kinds of fruits 
they are conspiring that how to load wine creepers with the grapes the village cottages are thatch covered and the wine creepers grows along the eaves of these thatches then the apple trees are bent nearly the ground with their heavy weight of apples the apple trees growing in the cottage gardens are covered with moss are weighted down with fruit next line 6 to 11 and to fill all fruits with ripeness to the core to swell the gourd and to plumb the hazel shells with a sweet kernel to set budding more and to more later flowers for the bees until they think warm days will never cease for summer has or brimmed their clammy cells so here all fruits are filled with the sweetness the gourd grows bigger and bigger the hazelnuts are filled with the sweet kernel many flowers are also bloom in autumn and the bees suck the sweetness of those flowers to the bees it seems that those flowers represent the continuation of summer though through the long and warm summer days the bees have collected so much honey that the cells in their hives are over full yet autumn provides more flowers in case of the bees would like to draw more sweetness from them next line 12 to 15 who hath not seen thee of the amid thy store sometimes who ever seeks abroad may find thee sitting careless on a granary floor the hair soft lifted by the winnowing wind here in the stanza the poet describes the occupations of autumn here autumn is personified under four pictures as a winnower as a reaper as a gleaner and as a cedar presser all the occupations like winnowing reaping gleaning cedar pressing that are performed by women belong to autumn thus autumn is here seen as a woman firstly autumn is seen winnowing winnowing means separating the chaff from the grains kids also said that if any even wants to see autumn he or she may go to the field and see the women engaged in the work of we knowing while the gentle breeze ruffles the locks of their locks of their hair next line 16 to 18 or on a half reaped furrow sound asleep drowsed with the fume of poppies while thy hook spires the next swath and all its twined flowers then autumn is seen as a reaper who has been engaged in reaping corn but in doing so she fall asleep by the smell of poppies and thus the next row of corn remains unreaped line 19 to 20 to and sometimes like a gleaner thou dost keep steady thy laden head across brook or by a cedar press with a patient look thou watchest the last oozing hours by us then autumn is seen as a gleaner here autumn is seen as a gleaner who collects grains from the field when the crops has been remo- has been removed for the weight of grains that is one of the gleaners hut the gleaner walks steadily along and crossing the stream then autumn is seen as a woman who extract juices by the wooden press from ripe apples in order to make cider and watching the drops of juices next line 23 to 24 where are the songs of spring ye where are they think not of them thou hast thy music too the stanza uh, the poet describes the sounds of autumn here he remembers the sweet songs of spring which are absent in autumn 
but uh, then in the next moment the poet says that there is no need to regret for not having the song so spring because autumn has its own music on song next line 25 to 26 while barred clouds bloom the soft dying day and touch the stubble plains with the rosy hue the sounds of autumn are here are heard when the day is dying gently or the day light slowly fading means in the evening time the time when the clouds glowing in the light of the setting sun here the poet has uh, displayed a picture of stubble fields which are colored red in the crimson light of the setting sun next line 27 to 33 then in a wailful choir the small gnats mourn among the rivers sallows born aloft or sinking as the light wind lies to lies or dies and full grown lambs loud bleat from hilly burn hedge crickets sing and now with treble soft the red breast whistles from a garden croft and gathering sallows titter in the skies. Here the melancholic buzzing of gnats are heard. The lambs bleating are heard. Then grasshoppers chirping are heard. There comes the delicate song of the twittering of the sallows in the sky. These are the glorious music of autumn. With this, we are concluding the poem.